Hello. Hi. Now that the dust has settled, or is on holiday, that's a weird image. I don't know what's wrong with it. It's high time we talked about the accents characters have in the popular, for a while, HBO show Game of Thrones. I'll do House of the Dragon once it's finished, which will still be long before Winds of Winter comes out. <laughs> You see, they're all over the bloody shop, the accents, and you might be able to get away with that stuff with the Yanks, but not over here, chum. You have Northerners with Southern accents, Southerners with Northern accents, Scots dropped in all over the place, and not a single Irishman, aside from Roose Bolton, who is, well, Mr. Umber here put it best. Your father was a cunt. Although he's still one of my favourite book characters. In this first chapter, I'm going to take a look at the North. Modelled fairly closely on the North of England and some of Scotland, most of the characters you see make a believable stab at sounding like they're from that region. Ned Stark still has his head attached at this point. Spoilers. Thus enabling to say things like Winter is coming. In his native Yorkshire accent. Kudos to D&D, or whoever told them it would be a good idea to have Ned and the Northerners sound like, well, Northerners. Something which isn't apparent in the books. Ned has the grim, earnest northernness down to a T, and as scene setting goes, it definitely helps build authenticity during the first episode of Game of Thrones. Jon Snow and Rob, so far, so northern. Don't think too much, Bran. Relax your bow arm. Reasonably good stab at the accent, too, from a Scot and a southerner. Probably easier for a Scot, I guess. Roderick, the big barrel of sideburns, is also packing a no-nonsense northern accent. Lord Stark! My lady. The guardsman just rode in from the hills. Captured a deserter from the Night's Watch. Catelyn Stark has a weird Irish accent, but she's not from the north, so I guess that's excusable for the moment, since we haven't been shown what Riverlanders sound like. Ned. Ten is too young to see such things. Once we hear what Bran sounds like, things start to go wrong. You understand why I did it? John said he was a deserter. But do you understand why I had to kill him? Oh, where's the old way? Not a trace of the North. The real North. In his voice. Theon also sounds Northern, but he grew up with the Stark, so it's not beyond the realms of believability that he would sound like them. Well, like most of them. Right. Give it here. No! Put away your blade. Take orders from your father, not you. Sansa sounds very, very southern. While Arya sounds like she's from Bristol. That's Jamie Lannister, the Queen's twin brother. Would you please shut up? Rickon sounds just as posh as Bran. Now come back with Mother. No, they won't. Uncle Benjin. Rides in with a northern accent, so big win for him. I got bigger. Road all day. Didn't want me to be alone with the Lannisters. And Maester Lewin, I'll let off as Maesters can be from pretty much anywhere. Jory sounds sort of Scottish, but I guess we'll let that pass. We've met before, you know. Have we? Strange, I've forgotten. The Siege of Pike. Hodor sounded pretty northern back before he got mine bucked. So that's the start. Let's take a look at some of the other northern houses. First up, the Umbers. Great John Umber might as well have a dire whippet down his trousers and be wearing a huge iron flat cap for how riotously northern he sounds as he bellows. There sits the only king. I mean to bend my knee to. The king of the north! Much later, we get Small John Umber, who's also authentically northern. Who owns the north? Freedom! Who owns the north? Freedom! Show me! Ned Umber only gets one line, and it's hard to hear, but we'll give him a pass. He sounds like he could be from up that way. Now and always. The cast Starks don't get much screen time, but they're relentlessly now, then. Lord Carstark really draws out his vowels and fits the north perfectly. We are King Stark and Car Stark. That didn't stop you from betraying me, and it won't save you now. I don't know what it just said. 
I wanted to haunt you to the end of your days. Torrent caster doesn't get any lines apart from. But Harold has a good stab at the accent. We know where she's going. Her brother's at Castle Black. Ned Stark's last surviving son. Later we have Alice who gets about as much dialogue as Ned, Umber. Now and always. And now the Boltons. Ugh. As I said, Roose Bolton is one of my favourite book characters and the actor portraying him on the show gives a decent interpretation. Theon but... holds the castle with a skeleton crew. Let me send word to my bastard at the Dreadfort. He can raise a few hundred men and retake Winterfell before the new moon. My god, where's he supposed to be from? He sounds like an Irishman who's lived in Islington for 20 years. Ramsay? Well, let's just say his accent hasn't changed a jot since he was Barry in Misfits. Welcome home, Lord Stark. Lock? I'm not sure what accent this is. Australian Cornish, maybe? Oh, nothing, bloody old daddy. Your daddy ain't here. Never forget that. Miranda sounds like she should be taking orders in a Knightsbridge restaurant. I like your dress. We made it for you. There's Lord Glover. Cup of coffee, darling. <laughs> Who seems to be channeling Great John Umber? Pleasure to watch. House Glover will stand behind House Stark, as we have for a thousand years. And I will stand behind Jon Snow. The King in the North. Lord Kerwin pipes up at Jon's King of the North scene, and he sounds like he's from up that way. So have a big tick there. The Boltons are defeated. The war is over. Winter has come. And Lyanna Mormont giving it a decent go, much like Commander Mormont did. Your son was butchered at the Red Wedding, Lord Mandalay. It was meant for my son, Jorah. He brought dishonor to our house, but he had the grace to leave the sword before he fled from Westeros. Fuck knows why Jorah sounds the way he does. Just how long was he in exile for? I forfeited the right to claim this song. It's yours. Lord Manderley, looking about a sixteenth the size he's made out to be in the books, also has a geographically authentic accent. My son died for Rob Stark, the young wolf. I didn't think we'd find another king in my lifetime. I didn't commit my men to your cause. Because I didn't want more Mandalays dying for nothing. There's a smattering of other characters in the North, and to the show's credit, most of them sound like they could be from there. All D&D had to do was some basic googling or go on YouTube and type Northern Accent List. They probably assumed the Americans would get upset if there weren't more accents included that reminded them of Richard King Curtis films. Overall, I'm giving the North five severed direwolf heads out of seven. Bye then.